Hello and this is lesson two in challenge of resource management. Here you can see a nice image of the, uh, from NASA of the Earth at night, all its, uh, the electricity uh, and light showing up from all our major cities and so on across the globe. Uh, and what you should be able to, should be leaping out at you um, is that some parts of the globe are really well illuminated. Okay, they have a huge amount of access to electricity like Western Europe here or the Eastern Seaboard of the United States. Other areas, despite having lots of people in them, if you take East Africa, yeah, quite quite largely populated, but not very much in the way of uh, electrical light being seen from from space. Um, other areas might have very little electrical light here uh, because they're uninhabitable areas like the, the Sahara the Sahara Desert. Okay, but it should get you thinking. Uh, access to electricity is not equal. Similarly, you've got a, a photograph here from Brazil. Okay. Uh, just have a little think about it. What's unequal? You've got a, a, a formalised shanty town here next to condominiums and, and apartments with their own swimming pools in each one, tennis courts and so on. So again, the world's not not equal. And uh, in terms of challenge of resource management, our access to resources isn't equal either. OK, we live in a very uneven planet. Um, I had a little look on the Oxfam website, okay, which is excellent. Um, and here's a few facts for you and just have a, have a think about it. Uh, the world's richest 1% have more than twice as much wealth as 6.9 billion people. Um, almost half of the people on our planet live on less than $5.50 per day. Um, today, 268 million children, one in every five, will not be allowed to go to school. Um, for every, every day, 10,000 people die because they lack access to affordable health care. Um, and men own 50% more of the world's wealth than women. And the 22 richest men have more wealth than all the women in, in Africa. So there are gender inequalities as well. So uh, we do live in a globally very unequal world. Okay, so today you're going to look at inequalities in the supply and consumption of resources. Uh, and remember, we're concentrating on food. Up on there, just there, food, water and energy. So to do that, we're going to just think about income first, and I'm going to focus on four things. OK, so uh, the countries in red, OK, any of these countries here, uh, they are our low income countries, according to the World Bank. Their gross national income is less than $1,025 uh, per year. The yellow countries are classified as lower middle income countries. You can see those here, OK, like Egypt, OK, um, Sudan, um, India. And then we've got the purple countries like Brazil, China, um, Iran, um, upper middle income countries. And then the green countries are classified as high income countries. So you're going to focus on the UK, Brazil, the Democratic Republic of Congo um, and India throughout the exercise. OK, um, so you can take a look at this map. The idea will be to go and find those countries like the UK and to write down what, what the um, kilocalorie intake is. So there you can see it's 3,300 kilocalories for the UK that's well above uh, recommended safe minimum levels for men and women okay so people in the UK are getting enough kilocalories for the Congo okay and other countries in Central Africa um, it's less than 2,000 kilocalories now that means that those people would be um, undernourished uh, with not getting enough nutrition per per day so you'll be able to compare those up okay there you go DRC and whether it's got this is a low income country and it's got inadequate, pardon, uh, inadequate kilocalorie intake. The UK, high income country, adequate kilocalorie intake. In terms of water scarcity, there's two different types. There's physical and there's economic. So physical is when it simply doesn't rain enough. There isn't enough precipitation to meet the needs of the people who live there. Um, so you can see those area um, in red. The... Um, Orange areas show economic water scarcity. Now, those areas have water. It will rain. There is precipitation, but there isn't the financial ability to actually uh, produce safe drinking water for people. OK, so you see large parts of sub-Saharan Africa have an economic water scarcity. Again, you can compare those. OK, so Brazil, largely little or no water scarcity with a patch in the northeast of physical water scarcity. And the last one you're going to look at is this Choropleth map here, coloured in map, on how much energy is consumed per person. 
the case of the darker the color, the more energy is consumed. So the United States consumes um, an awful lot of energy. Okay, back to our friend, the Democratic Republic of the Congo has low energy consumption per person. Okay, so again, you can have a look at that and compare it with the gross national income map. How does it compare? Um, on top of that, there's a little web page of resources for you. Okay, so you can have a look at those. Global inequality, we've talked about those in this video. Resource supply, providing vital items from sources of natural resources. Resource consumption is the use of those waters, such as food, energy and water. So all those resources are on there. Um, and at the bottom of the page, it, it gives you a few reasons why um, consumption of those resources is, is unequal. Okay, uh, some countries have better access than others. Some have more, more of those resources than others. Some countries are wealthier than others, so they can buy in more resources if they've got a, a deficit. Some of those places have better technology than others for things like uh, producing electricity and water. And then there's the expectations and the standard of living of the population. So you've got that resource there. So the task, OK, define those three terms and then you're going to use the maps that we've just been through to pop in um, what their income classification is, how much calories they've got, whether there's water scarcity um, and what the energy consumption's like. And then once you've done that, um, you can identify the general patterns on the on the maps from the table and then just say why some countries use more water resources than than others. Um, and if you need the answers, they're on there um, and on that on that slide as well. OK, um, so we'll just finish up with a dad joke. I had an awkward moment the other day when I paid two pounds for a bottle of Evian water and then noticed backwards that it spelt naive.